What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have Invest 92L that is continuing to organize and develop. Looks already like a tropical depression. You're starting to see the rotation get a lot better with that system over there. We have this Gulf Mexico area of interest as of right here that is continuing to show signs of organization and development. And we're also seeing a new cluster of thunderstorms coming off the coast of Africa that could be potentially tagged as a new area of invest, as well as some more models showing a potential Caribbean situation coming up down the road. We have all of it right here in this video right now, so we're going to go ahead and get started for you guys. So here's the situation we have going on through much of the Atlantic Ocean. We have Invest 92L that is actually now moving pretty much west-northwest at this point. It's not really started to make that turn like many of the models had anticipated by that point. So here's what we have going on. A broad area of low pressure located several hundred miles southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands continues to produce a large area of showers and thunderstorms. This activity has become a bit more concentrated while showing signs of organization. Environmental conditions appear conducive for, the next, uh, for the additional development. Tropical depression is likely to form in the next couple of days. While the system moves west-northwestward or northwestward across the eastern and central tropical Atlantic. So here's the situation. Uh, formation chance in the next 48 uh, in hours is now at 80 percent was at 70 percent before formation chance in the next seven days was 80 percent so that's what we have with invest 92l continuing to show signs of organization and development would not be surprised if they attack this as a as a tropical depression and this finally closes its center in the next 24 hours. So definitely something we need to keep an eye on. We're also paying attention to Invest 93L now. They've actually tagged this as Invest 93L, which is pretty interesting. Showers and thunderstorms have, be have not become any better organized this afternoon in association with an area of low pressure over the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. Environmental conditions appear only marginally favorable for the system and, uh, for, for favorable and the system has a short window to develop over the next day or so. By Wednesday morning, this system is forecast to merge with a developing frontal boundary over the western Gulf of Mexico. An Air Force uh, Reserve reconnaissance aircraft is en route to investigate the system this afternoon and will provide more information about the storm structure. Regardless of tropical cycle and development, the system is forecast to produce gale force winds over portions of the northern Gulf, uh, of Gulf Coast. Uh, in the, by the latter part of this week, and potentially rain and potentially heavy rainfall. For more information, see the NWS office. Thirty percent chance in the next forty-eight hours. Seventy uh, and and then in this next seven days. I actually want to go ahead and check air uh, rec uh, reconnaissance at this point. It's currently on its way to its uh, to the invest. At, at this point, it's actually in the storm as of right now, so we're gonna get some updates on the structure as more information continues to come in. Either way, we are looking at uh, some situations uh, that are continuing to pop up, so we'll have to keep an eye and see how this whole thing plays out. But even if this thing doesn't develop, as we've said before, it's going to bring potentially a lot of flash flooding and a lot of heavy rains to much of the Deep South. So that's something we need to keep an eye on as time continues to go on. And as we continue to get into this active weather period, be sure to check out my friends over at Prestige Weather Consulting. They do individual one-on-one -on -one weather consulting catered to your local area. For more information, be sure to check them out in the link in the description down below. And be sure to use the code PREDICTOR for 50% off your first month. Now, if that being said, we're going to go ahead and get to the European model at this current point. We're going to go ahead and get to all the operational models as of right now. And now, let's go ahead and get started. So here's the situation we have right here for the European. European is showing this a low pressure system starting to potentially show signs of organization in the Gulf of Mexico before Hurricane Lydia makes landfall in the next little bit. Speaking of Lydia, by the way, Lydia is now a Category 3 hurricane with winds of 115 miles per hour. The minimum central pressure is 959 millibars expected to make landfall in the next uh, in the next 12 hours or so. So definitely something we have to pay attention to as time continues to go on it is forecast to potentially uh, potentially weaken or something along those lines actually no this is this was at at, at 9 a.m uh, uh that 9 a.m mountain time when this was issue, uh, when the discussion was issued so we'll have to monitor it for sure but in the meantime while we're dealing with that lydia the reason i'm talking about lydia is because that's potentially expected again to the Gulf of Mexico. And we were talking about earlier how this might merge up with this new tropical wave that's over here in the Gulf of Mexico. It definitely will give it a pretty large moisture infusion for sure. 
And we'll have to see how that whole thing plays out. But either way, you're seeing southeast Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, into Georgia, and lots of Florida getting potentially very heavy rains, regardless of development or not, and potentially some very gusty winds at the same time. While this thing eventually comes off the coast uh, of Georgia and South Carolina, becomes a subtropical system most likely, and then just moves out to the east and kind of just merges with another system over there. Meanwhile, as for 92L, Europeans having a hard time really developing this at any time. So we'll have to keep an eye on it for sure as time continues to progress and we'll continue to uh, monitor it here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. However, we'll have to, uh, we're also paying attention to other threats that are currently in the, in, the, in the Atlantic Ocean at this time. So here's what we have going on with the GFS. GFS showing similar situation. Lydia is bringing a huge moisture infusion uh, to this tropical wave that's currently in the Gulf of Mexico, bringing lots of heavy rainfall to Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, especially the Florida Panhandle before becoming some sort of subtropical system as time continues to progress. Meanwhile, 92L, according to the latest GFS, has this thing ending up becoming a tropical storm briefly before uh, before weakening to depression strength and then just an open wave at that current point. Definitely something we need to monitor as time continues continues to go on. However, as of right now, it's not expected to really grad, uh, develop stronger than a tropical storm at this current time, according to the GFS. So right now, I'm not too particularly concerned about that, but I am concerned about a potential Central American gyre that may organize and develop in the, ne in the next uh, week or so. So that's something I've been paying attention to for quite a while, ladies and gentlemen. And the CMC model has also been uh, showing a, a scenario where something plays out. So here's the CMC model as of right now. The CMC has been very interesting to say at the very least. CMC has this tropical wave bringing lots of heavy rainfall to the deep south. 92L quickly organizing and developing, getting to tropical storm strength before starting to weaken and then eventually dissipate out here in the Atlantic Ocean eventually. But not yet, not quite yet. The CMC is kind of having this pushing out to sea, staying out to sea, potentially strengthening to a strong tropical storm. But meanwhile, a new threat is potentially uh, on the horizon. Horizon. About five days out, we're starting to see some areas of low pressure across parts of the Caribbean Sea as of right here, especially in uh, off the coast of Central America over here with that gyre that is expected to organize and develop off the coast of Nicaragua. It's starting about six to uh, seven days out, so that is a little bit far out. However, the CMC has been very consistent about this, so we'll have to continue to keep an eye on it. CMC is showing signs of really quick organization and strengthening, primarily due to the uh, due to the ocean heat content that's over there. I wouldn't be surprised at this kind of strengthening if it were to take place with the right conditions. Then this thing makes landfall in Cuba and potentially br uh, brings some impacts towards Florida down the road. So we'll have to continue to keep an eye on it as time continues to go on with all of this. One thing I do want to check is the 200 to 850 millibar wind shear just with the, uh, the CMC to see how this whole thing plays out. This is pretty interesting because starting about five days out, we do see a, qu a, qu a quick weakening of the wind shear in a lot of the Gulf of Mexico for about a day or so. Then it starts to come back and really be incredibly strong. And then we have the gyre starting to organize and develop and then you are starting to see a scenario where, yes, the Gulf of Mexico is becoming completely hostile, but if it moves to the north, the area between uh, the Atlantic Ocean and Gulf of Mexico, that's straight over there, it's definitely uh, not as uh, unfavorable as the areas in the Gulf of Mexico are. So we'll have to see how that whole thing plays out. But in the initially, from what I'm seeing with the CMC, it does appear to be moving through an area of less wind shear in a lot in a lot stronger of an environment. We have global sea temperatures that are 30 plus degrees Celsius across the Caribbean Sea. We have ocean heat content values, especially as it's entering uh, the western half of the uh, of the Caribbean Sea, the northwestern pocket. OHC values, ocean heat content values of well over 200 are there. And for those of you who do not understand what two, uh, 200 OHC means, let's just put it uh, let's just put it this way. Basically, how OHC is calculated is it's calculated by the wa uh, the water temperature at the surface, and it's also calculated by how deep it is uh, down, uh, how deep down it is. So, 200 OHC, you're getting a huge water depth at that. You're getting a huge area of 30, 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degree Fahrenheit temperatures, and you're also taking into account how deep that is. I'd say that's about 50 to 75 meters deep, maybe even deeper than that in some uh, parts of the Caribbean over there. So that's definitely something we need to monitor as time continues to go on. And wind shear across that area. We were actually discussing that. Wind shear across this whole area, weak to none. So 
at least for a good a good portion of that time while it's over the Caribbean Sea, it's going to be moving through really the best conditions it can at that point. So we'll have to see how that whole thing plays out down the road. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is the CMC model. Next model we're showing you is the NavGem. NavGem has been very interesting this whole hurricane season. It's been it was showing some very interesting scenarios with Invest 92L just a few days ago, potentially bringing that up to hurricane strength close to the uh, the what uh, Cape Verde, Cape, Cabo Verde Islands, rather. Excuse me for that stutter right there. And then you and then we uh, but now it's all the models are really showing tropical storm strength at best, primarily due to wind sh uh, conditions becoming increasingly unfavorable as well as the subtropical system that is the, the basically what is coming from this gulf of system right here in combination with what lydia is showing over here with that moisture infusion bringing lots of rain to texas louisiana mississippi alabama georgia the carolinas and florida right there so we'll have to continue to keep an eye on it and invest 92l is expected to potentially merge with that down the road at this current point so we'll have to keep an eye on all these threats as time continues to go on cmc has been showing once again that caribbean threat navgem is having a little bit of a more difficult time but keep in mind that only goes 180 hours out so that's part of the reason right there so that's the situation we have going on with the, the navgem the icon is the last model we are going to really talk about icon model has been really playing a lot of scenarios out Throughout this entire hurricane season, we're starting to see with the Gulf Storm, since that's the most imminent threat at this current point, really a lot of potential fl of, of fl flood and wind threat for Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and Florida, like I've been saying, like a broken record. 92L starts strengthening into a tropical storm before kind of stagnating due to unfavorable conditions and then starting to weaken at that current point. And then the, pretty much the rest from there is history at that point. So that's what we have going on. But the icon is also picking up on a new tropical wave that I was talking about just at the start of this video with this cluster of thunderstorms over here. Potentially a new area of interest could uh, be developing at that point. So we'll have to keep an eye on it as time continues to go on. And then this one actually has, has it moving due west, which could down the road potentially be a little bit of a uh, of a concern for those of you who are watching from the Leeward Islands and the Lesser Antilles for that fact. So that's definitely something we will have to continue to monitor at this current point. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and close the video out right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. Be sure to check out my friends over at Prestige Weather Consulting for 50% off your first month using the code PREDICTOR. And with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.